Okay, uh, just to give you an update. Right. That's me, uh, 847. And I've set it on 14229. Um, there's my LDG 8600. I use the 600 because I know you get anything up to about 600 watts on the uh, BA, BA, BLA 350. So I couldn't get it out then. Right. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I've sent you um, a few PDFs. And one of the PDFs is uh, this one, the A47 standby cable. So as you can see there, that's from the standby on the back of the radio. There's the connections there. RCA. And that's how you connect it. ALC one, straight through. As you can see there, RCA to RCA. That's it. Right. Uh, let's try and get these done right. On the back of the 847, there you can see it. There's your standby. And there's your ALC. So ALC cable into there, straight into the back of the BLA, BLA 350, and the standby cable from there, straight into where uh, I think it is. There it is, number five um, on the BL, BLA 350. Number four is ALC. That's the top one just there, and number five there is to your PTT, which is your standby. Right, when you've got that set up. Um, you know about your input and outputs anyway, so no problem there, antenna and all the rest of it. So what I've, I've done, I've gone from the radio to the amp. From the amp, I go to my um, SWR meter. And then from the SWR meter into the uh, auto ATU, then to the antennas. That's the way that I've done it. And everything works. So what I normally do is um, the connections that you've got there. Let me just make sure. When I'm setting the amp up, I set it up. So let me just show you. Let me just key up because I've just tuned up anyway. And sorry about this. There you go. You can see 7.2 forward and reflect zero. And just above, it tells you the frequency for 14300, just to the right, that's the SWR. Right, so when I key up, 7.2 watts, and that's it. So, maybe, let's just put that on. Bring that down. There's 8 watts. Do not go above the 8 watts, because what you might do... You might blow the output of the amp, and if you blow the output of the amp, then uh, RM Italy will say, it's your fault, uh, you've got to pay for the repair, you've got to pay for the post and all the rest of it. It's not. Uh, with BLA350, if you run too much power into it, that's when you'll actually blow it, and they'll say, yes, it's your fault. Uh, in the manual... I can't remember what page. It does say run full power into there. And I did check with some of the emporiums, the big emporiums over here in the UK. Uh, Waters and Stanton, um, Martin Lynch, Nevada. Everybody says you can run 100 watts in there, which is a load of rubbish. This is why I say to everybody now, there is a problem with the RM uh, amps, the BLA350. That's the blue one. The black one, from what I've been told, will take 100 watts input and will work 100% with the 100 watts, i.e. with the ALC and bring it down to the, the 14 watts or whatever you set on the back, i.e. from there, number three, which is the ALC, um, I can't see what it says there. Can't see what it says on the back. But it just limits uh, the power that actually goes in there. That's what it does. So that is the problem with it, and uh, quite a few people have had these problems. Mine's been sent back because of that problem, because I was running 10 watts, and it uh, did blow uh, the PAs, uh, the transistors in there, 
and um, I sent it back to Nevada. Uh, they got it sorted out with RM uh, Italy. They repaired it and sent it back. It didn't cost me anything because it is their fault and they do send you a, um, a list of all the faults. I've got mine. And um, as I said to them, I wasn't running excessive power because I knocked mine down to 10 watts maximum. But it still had the problem. And that's why I only run uh, 10 watts now. And make sure you've got the or updated firmware if possible. Mine's v, uh, version 1.10.f. And as you see, there's my problem one. And um, both SD2941 slash 10s had gone on the amplifier. And that was in 2011. And it's, it's worked flawlessly. Just using 8 watts. So don't use any more than 8 watts as I say. Anything uh, more than that you'll blow it. Um, so. What you have to do check as well. Is when the amp's running. I'm not running yet because I'll, I'll do another video for you. That was just to show you the connections. Uh, when the amp's running. Your ALC, you'll see it. Um, let's grab this. Sorry about the moving on the videos. Right, so you'll see it coming up, and you don't want to go above there. But when you do key up, and, and you're doing your, your tune up uh, with your pass there, uh, uh, sorry, ATU and all the rest of it, um, you will see that you'll have the ALC, sorry, not once you've tuned up. But uh, once you're actually talking on SSB, you will see that your ALC is stuck just there. It'll be stuck there. Don't worry about it. I don't know if it's something with the radio or something with the amp. This is this is on my turn. It might happen to yours, but it does on mine. So my ALC comes up to there. And even if I don't talk, it's just a standard figure it comes up to somewhere just there. But then when I either use my mic or use some of my audio gear for the standard mic that I've got. Then when I'm doing the ALC for it, it'll go up to where I want it to end. Which is roughly about there. So that's where I actually go to the max. I don't go fully over. I've got my audio up to there and it works perfect. No splatter, no nothing. I've checked on an SDR radio. And my audio is fine, no splatter, no spikes anywhere else. So I know it's running 100%, so I have no problems at all. So, as I say with the setup, straight from um, the back of the 847, there's your standby cable. It's a five pin job to ALC. So ALC, RCA to RCA, standby cable. 5 din uh, socket to an RCA and RCA for your PTT your standby is number 5 number 4 for your ALC and you've got the picture already for um, the standby cable anyway that's it so if anybody else is getting this amp as long as you go with what I say, you shouldn't have any problems at all. I can't guarantee anything. Um, but I'll say you shouldn't have any problems. I had my problem in 2011. It's 2014, nearly coming on 2015. And I've not had no problems at all since then. So you can go with that. Um, with regards to your RM. Sorry, let me just go on to it. The ALC. Uh, trimmer there. Let me just pull back out now. Go back to normal. All you do is you you make sure you're transmitting on 8 watts. And then you go to the back here. If you can get to it. I can just about get to mine just through here. So I've got all my audio gear there. So I can just about get to the back. And um, you just make sure that setting 3, the trimmer, ALC trimmer. Is set on 8 watts as well. So I always check them. Before I transmit. I always make sure. I know I've got 8 watts on there. 
Uh, I've checked with my SWR meter. That's got eight watts showing there. And then with the amp, like I say, I'll, I'll do one uh, with the amp uh, all set up. I'm not going to do it at the moment. As I say, I'm just uh, showing you what you need to do when you're putting all the cables through. And you don't need an 80 amp, uh, sorry, a 70 amp power supply. Um, I've got power supply just down there. That one's on. It's a 25 amp. And that runs uh, my gear anyway, uh, my 847 anyway, and whatever other bits I'm doing. But there you go. Hopefully that'll help you. Uh, you've got the manual. You've got the uh, information PDF uh, for the standby cable as well. So I've sent you that and the manual. And I think that's about all you needed. Okay, Ian. Uh, have a look at this quick video and uh, hopefully it should be okay for you. And I'll do another one just so you can see um, the amp working anyway. And regarding the fan, uh, there's a couple of settings you can set uh, within the, the menu. As I say, check what version uh, EEPROM you've actually got in there, what version it is. Um, and if you've got one of the latest ones... I think mine was 2012 that I've got on mine. As I say, it's a couple of years old, but you're not sending it all the way back just to have it updated when it works fine. And um, on the fan, you can actually set, when you first do it, go on, press one of the buttons, and it automatically sends a rush of air all the way through to clear anything out. If there's any dust or anything there, it does that. And I've set it so it comes on... Um, when it gets up to 38 degrees uh, C, it comes on at setting 7. There's 9 settings. Mine comes at setting 7 and cools it down. But then when it gets over like 40 degrees, then it'll come on setting 9 and start to cool it all down. Um, I know the, the black version of this has got a, 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 a hole at the top or fan on the top as well to draw air in to actually cool the PAs. So... You can do more on the back, as I say. There's just the grills. There's a massive heat sink inside. Let me just see if there's any more. Um, should be images, yep. Yeah. So, it's very well made. I think that's it, really. It's very well made. And it works very well. There's no, no spikes or anything. This is one of the best ones that they've done. Uh, for the price. So, have a bash. And... Um, see how it goes. Uh, I don't think you should have any problems. Okay, that's uh, all it is from me. M0AOV.